Hey everyone, Animal Man here. Today we're going to build the warmest survival shelter on the planet, the Debris Hut. This is the ultimate survival shelter. Stay tuned. The idea behind the Debris Hut is you want the simplest, most economical shelter that you can possibly build to save your time, save energy. And also you want it to be as warm as you can get it and waterproof, which the Debris Hut is. And uh, that is why it is the ultimate survival shelter. You don't need a fire. You don't need to heat it except with your own body. And they're very, very small. So the way I explain this to people is you ever look up in the trees in the winter and see those big balls of leaves? They are squirrel nests. And those squirrels make a frame for their nest. Then they cover it with leaves and interwove. They've interwoven the, the leaves all throughout it. Then the whole inside of that is stuffed with leaves as well. And the inside of that is just big enough for that little sucker to curl up in a ball and heat the thing from the inside. And these nests are windproof, they're waterproof, they're wonderful. And um, the, the point here is you want to mimic what the squirrels do. We could just have a pile of leaves and that will work in an emergency. We're going to do that step first. Um, but if you build a frame for it, like a tripod, an elongated tripod, and then cover it with ribbing, then you put the leaves on there and then stuff the inside with the leaves. That shelter holds the leaves up and keeps them fluffy and it makes it that much warmer and it will last longer for you. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, I've listened to and watched many videos of people teaching this and they always make the frame first, show you the frame first. I'm not going to do that because in real life survival, like here, you don't build the frame. You get the leaves or the debris. The debris could be leaves, pine needles, ferns, reeds, cattails, grasses, just about anything that's soft and airy that will create that dead air space to insulate your body. Around here, we're going to find a lot of ferns. There's some oak, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of evergreens around here too, so we're going to get a lot of that in here also, and some grasses. So we're going to collect tons of debris, stack it up next to where our shelter is going to be. The shelter is going to be right where I'm sitting here. We're going to stack it up right nearby, and the reason we do that first is because that way, if it's getting dark out, it starts to rain, starts to snow, if you're tired, if you get hurt, and you can't finish your shelter, at least you have the debris to burrow into. And that'll keep you warm and you'll survive the night and you can finish your shelter later on. So that's the reason that most people won't tell you. So we're going to get to it, start collecting the debris. You're not picky. If there's little sticks in it, twigs, other plants, you leave it in there. You just grab it as quickly as you can. We're going for bulk here. And usually... When you think you're done, when you think you've got enough, you're not even close. You need like three times that much, easily. It takes a while. If you're smart, you'll use your shirt, jacket, whatever you have to pile this stuff up onto. That way you can save time, get bigger loads to bring back in your pile. is like the worst time to be doing this because it's almost the fall the leaves have been sitting here all year just rotting getting matted down but we're gonna make it work we'll figure it all out so you just go ape crap on it you just grab everything Right now, again, energy con conservation is the name of the game. So as we go and we'll make our trips for our debris, we're going to start collecting small sticks, about anywhere from two to four feet long, anywhere from finger to wrist thick. And these are going to end up being the ribbing for our shelter. So when I carry the debris back, I'm going to bring some sticks with us. You'll see what I mean. Alright, so we've got enough branches and debris at least to get started with the frame of our shelter now. So 
What I want to do is I want to get three key pieces. Number one is a ridge pole. A ridge pole is the part that I'm going to lay underneath. That's the length of your body plus a little extra. So this is customized for each person depending on your height and what you want to do basically you want to measure a branch that's about I don't know arm between arm and wrist thick and you want to find a branch or a sapling of that diameter so it's nice and strong not rotted and you want it to be your height when you extend your arm to your fingertips plus one foot higher than your fingertips so that's customized for you so we're gonna find that and then we're gonna find two other smaller ones same diameter hopefully that have a fork in the top or we can break it off like a fork and uh, those should be about four foot and those are going to form the three legs of our tripod and then we can use all these smaller branches from there to create the rest of the frame so here's the easy and smart and safe way to break branches whatever length you want you find two trees close together or a tree with a fork in the middle that's you know in the range where you can reach easily and you jam it in there like so and you want the part that you want to break behind this one and with both hands you pull it towards you easy break there you go it breaks exactly where you want it to not going to hurt yourself none of this over the knee business or like stepping on it business where you get hurt Alright, so we're going to lay our ridge pole where we want it. The entrance is going to be facing you guys here, right about where my hands are. And we're going to take our two fork sticks. And first I'm going to put the ridge pole in one of them here. And then we're going to get the other one where we need it to be. Get a little bit wider. Yeah, right there looks good. So, I should be able to lay down fully in here like this. And uh, it should be just enough room. It should be just wide enough for your shoulders, about six inches from the bottom here, which this is. So this looks good. I'm going to go with it. Now the next step. We're going to use all the smaller branches we collected. We're going to complete ribbing, just the same angle as these large ones. We're going to lay them against it all the way down on either side. You don't want the sticks to go more than 8 or 10 inches, if that above this ridge pole because when this is covered with leaves if any of these branches stick out above that if it rains it's going to wick right down these and draw the water into your shelter you want the water to run off so make sure these are all trimmed to the right height to avoid problems later on that will ruin your night or ruin your trip or make it dangerous even alright you guys so here's our frame complete for the most part just want you to take a look all around it here. There's the inside. Perfect. I'm very, very happy with how this one came out. And uh, now the next step, again, something that a lot of people don't tell you in these videos, but it's an important step to making sure you can sleep in this thing and not be miserable. So we need to now put some latticing across it horizontally. And this is very, very long, thin pieces. Like a lot of what I have left here, I left here to use for this. And we lay them across, and you can even weave them in between. Just be careful you don't disturb this too much. But the point of that is, if we just piled all this debris on the skeleton how it is, obviously a lot of it's going to fall through, right? And over time, more and more will fall through. The inside will get compressed. You'll have less on the outside. So it's going to get colder and colder and colder. So this latticing helps to keep the leaves on top on top so they stay where you want them to. That way this whole thing will be fluffy and airy and supported and they'll stay where you put them basically. So you can use branches like I have here or 
There's evergreen boughs everywhere. You can even use green evergreen boughs. Just make sure they're not from a species that's poisonous like you. Um, you don't even want to breathe that in in your shelter. So, you know, things like pine, pine's perfect for this. One more tip for you guys. I want to show you now before I put all the last thing on. I laid one piece across. When I lay these sticks vertically for our frame, I try to lay them the way they grow. That way, if there's any forks, I can then use them to put the latticing in. So I have it hooked in there, and then I have it hooked in down here on this birch down here too. That's the easiest way to get the lattice to stay where you want it to. So just keep that in mind when you're making your shelter. That's all. All right, everybody. It's getting to be almost the evening time. Been working hard on my camp all day. We're at the point where I've got enough leaves where I want to start getting the shelter together. I'm still going to need more leaves, but I want to start getting this so at least I have some leaves in there. So I'm going to tell you guys something else now that people usually will not tell you in a video like this about debris hut. Now, if it was the summertime and I built this hut, I would build this as it is, put the leaves on top, leaves on the inside, and that is great for shedding water. It's waterproof, and it's also great for the wind and also keeping mosquitoes and bugs off you. And that's all you need. The thing is, we measured it to our body length, and your head ends up right on the edge here. And if it's very, very cold out, you don't want your head on the edge. You need to have debris around your head because you lose so much body heat through your head. So what you do, because it's supposed to be in the 40s tonight, and uh, it's way too cold to have my head exposed, you build a little extension tunnel. That way you make your hut a little bit longer, and uh, you can fit a little bit more debris on there around your head, basically. So I've got another two smaller Y sticks, and I'm going to shove them in the ground about here. It's okay if they don't stay in on their own, because we're going to pile them up with sticks in a minute. There's good. And then one right about, where's my spot? Right in here. Good. Right in there. And now... What we can do with those, so we can take our other sticks, connect the two Y sticks this way, and then connect the two Y sticks over here. I need a longer one over there. Maybe this will work. And then we lay a whole bunch across the top. Put it all together. And now we have an entryway, an extension collar basically, and we put debris on top of this too. Just going to lay a whole ton of these on top. And then a very, very quick lattice going the opposite direction. And I, I don't know why people don't show this in their videos more. I, I don't know if uh, it's lack of experience, they don't know how to do this, which might be it, or lack of imagination or ingenuity or uh, learning from your mistakes. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, not that I'm like the best in the world, end all be all, debris hut master by any means, but I mean, I've been able to figure this out and I don't have superpowers. I'm going to put just a teeny tiny amount of lattice on the sides and call it a day. Get the debris on here. To start out gentle at first, make sure your structure does not move around. Let things stay where you want them. But then you can just dump it on pretty soon.
All right, it's dusk. We're at the point where it's looking pretty good. I wish the debris was a little bit thicker, but it's supposed to be in the 40s tonight. We should be okay. And you know you're in good shape when you peek in here and you don't see any cracks of daylight anywhere in there. There's a good indicator for you that you're in pretty good shape, if it's not that cold. If it were below freezing, we'd have to have three feet plus of debris on the sucker in all directions. You should be able to be up to your armpit trying to feel that ribbing we put in there in the frame up to your armpit and leaves before you feel it, if it's that cold. But now, the big thing we have to do now and get done is we need to stuff the inside of this. Because I learned the hard way, living in one of these for a week in May in New Jersey, that the outside shell and debris on the top is like your tent when you go camping. Keeps you out of the wind, out of the rain, bugs away. The debris on the inside, that's your sleeping bag. And without that debris in there, your body cannot possibly heat that thing up. Just like if you slept in a tent with no sleeping bag. So we've got to get ourselves off the ground and surrounded by that debris. So I've got a pile of that on the entrance and I'm going to shovel it all in there. So I'm just going to go right in front right here and just shove this all right in there. Then I'm going to have to stick my legs in there and kick, keep kicking it all back. Make sure it gets all the way down. Ooh. All right, well, could have done better, but I've done much worse too, so. I'm very happy with this. We'll call this done for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time on Animal Man Survivor. Take it easy.